The Trigger Spoon Jr. Big enough to draw strikes from trophy trout, small enough to round up a limit of pan-sized fryers, and the perfect spoon to put on the end of your line when the trolling gets tough. Pick up your kit at Trigger Spoon Juniors today at fishhuntshoot.com. Welcome back to the channel. I am Kel Kellogg and we are gonna talk about spinning reels. As you can hear, my generator is still going. I still don't have power. Um, I got a viewer request from a young man. I think he's eight years old. His name is Tim. Him and his dad watch the channel religiously and Tim wanted to know how to set up and spool a spinning reel. He's getting some outfits together. He's an avid angler and I am gonna start you off on the right path, Tim. Um, and this, this video comes at a perfect time because the power out, I was in my garage, Cat had knocked over some rods and I ended up stepping on one of my Abu Garcia um, 30, 30 size spinning reels and uh, it, it's totally inoperable because I'm huge. So I was down in Auburn yesterday, I stopped by Will Fish Tackle and he had a supply of these inexpensive $19 Shimano 3000 size spinning reels. And I'm thinking this is probably the quality spinning reel that you're gonna be using, Tim. Reels at this price point, they work fine. The drag is gonna be smooth enough to deal with just about any kind of fish. They're not gonna break the bank. Um, it comes in a clamshell. And uh, I am gonna spool this up like I would spool it up for an adult angler. And I suggest you do the same. Clearly, you are already a serious fisherman, and uh, you know why not be using gear gear that is set up in an adult way. Now, in the past, I would have just spooled this up with six or eight pound test monofilament or copolymer line, but in this case, I'm going to spool it up with uh, braided line. So I'm going to start out with this P line CXX eight pound test. I'm going to put some backing on here just enough to cover the spool, just enough to cushion the braid. Then I'm gonna knot on this fins, 15 pound test braided line, and I'm gonna top the reel off with that braid. But uh, let me get started by prying this thing out of the clamshell, and I will show you how to put the handle on a spinning reel, because most spinning reels, especially at this price point, they come with the handle detached. So let me get started on this package and I will be right back when I get it out of there. Okay, I'm back. I got the reel out of the package. As you can see, it does not have a handle attached. And in the bottom of the package, here's what I had. I had this uh, this, this little thumb, uh, like a thumb screw, like a nut right there. And then I had the handle. Now you can set up a spinning reel like this with the handle on the right side or the left side. Most of the people I fish with are right-handed and they reel with their left hand when it comes to a spinning reel. So I'm gonna set this one up that way. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this square shaft and I'm gonna put it in this square hole right here and work that in there just like that. Now that's just kind of hanging loose. It's just setting in there. Now I'm gonna take the nut right there I'm gonna work that into this square hole and it has an interesting kind of a, a square silicone washer on it. These are all a little bit different depending on which reel, which brand you get, but they're all basically the same idea. So I'm gonna start screwing this in there and what I'm screwing it into is I'm screwing it into the other side of that handle. So screw it, screw it, screw it, keep screwing it in there and uh, it will eventually tighten up. So I'm still screwing it. This one here, some of them you can turn the handle backwards and it will tighten the screw, but that's not how this one works. You've actually got to take up all the slack with this nut. So and it's got very fine threads on it, so it takes a second. So there we are. Now, when you're at this point, you want this, you know, finger tight. Don't, don't go crazy. Don't use a pliers on it. Don't get it super tight. Finger tight's enough, just like that. And check it periodically when you're fishing. And you'll feel, if it gets loose, you'll feel this handle wobbling around. Now we're almost ready to spool line, but let me show you something about spinning reels, okay? See this spinning reel here? There's a little button down here. They all have the buttons in a little bit different place, but you usually find it down here somewhere on the bottom of the reel. 
That button's in one position. I can reel backwards and I can reel forward, okay? Some people use that in place of a drag, but I'm gonna tell you what. If you do that, you're probably gonna get in trouble unless you've been doing it that way your whole life. Go ahead and engage that switch like that. Now it will only reel forward. I can't reel backwards. So make sure you've got that in the anti-reverse mode. And then on this one, on the spool, there's a little piece of paper. I gotta get this piece of paper off. And it's like it comes off right there. There we go. Paper's off and we are ready to spool up. Let me get started with that. Let me grab that eight pound P-line and uh, we will go for it. Okay, I'm back and as you can see, I've attached the reel to one of my line winders. You could attach this to your fishing rod and uh, you know, you could have your dad or your mom or your brother or your buddy put a, a pencil through the spool of line that you were gonna spool up with and do it that way. But I'm gonna use this line winder and actually as I start out here, the first you know, little piece of line I put on here, the backing segment of the line, I'm not even gonna put that in the line winder because I'm just using it for backing purposes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some of this line off the spool here, like this, get a little bit extra there because I don't wanna, I don't wanna jerk the, the spool of line off the table and I'm standing next to. I'm surrounded in snow here. I'm like halfway up to my knee in snow. So I don't wanna drop anything. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, I have the, I've opened the bale. That's the bale right there. I know you're familiar with that because your dad told me that you've caught quite a few fish and you've done quite a bit of fishing with his gear. So that's the bale. You wanna flip the bale to the open position, okay? And I'm not so all I'm gonna do now is start winding the line on the spool. I'm not gonna use any kind of fancy knot. I've got the end of that P-line right there. I'm just gonna put it across the bale like that, trap it with my thumb, and I'm just gonna start winding it on. Let me get a hold of it there. There we go, I've got a hold of it. I'm just gonna start wrapping it around the spool until I get enough on there that it doesn't wanna come off. All right, just like that. Now, there's that tag end there. I'm gonna trim that off, but uh, not immediately I'm not. Now, I gotta tighten the drag on this, like so. Tighten it down pretty good. I don't want the drag slipping. I'm gonna to toss that down there. I'm gonna get the line up here. I'm gonna just run it through my fingers and I'm just gonna put a few wraps on the reel right there. And now I got a scissors in my pocket. I also have a ton of other things in my pocket. I have my keys right there. Don't drop your keys in the snow. That's important. I guess the scissors wasn't in that pocket. In this pocket, oh, I have a headlamp. Okay, here's my scissors. This little tiny scissors. I'm gonna go ahead in here now. I'm gonna trim, see that tag end? I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off. Get right up next to the spool as close as I can and clip that off, okay? The line is attached to the spool without a knot. When you get ready to re-spool, you wanna take this line off. You don't have to deal with a knot. It's just wrapped over itself. It's gonna come right off, no problem. So. I've got a little bit of line on there. I'm gonna put a little bit more. There we go. Now that 15 pound test braid I'm gonna put on there, it's very fine in diameter. So I can put a fair amount of backing on here. I'm gonna make sure the, the spool is good and covered and I'm putting it on there. I got it, you know, I'm running it through my fingers. So it's going on there firmly, but uh, not crazy firm. Okay, so let me show you the reel. I'm gonna clip this off. But that's how full the reel is. You can see that. I've got the spool completely covered. I've got some line to work with here. That line's a little bit twisted, totally fine. I'm gonna hang this up here on the edge of my table. Take this like this, take my scissors, and I'm just gonna cut this, uh, cut this line off just like that, snap, okay? Now, how am I gonna attach the braid to this line? I'm gonna use a very, very simple method. Here's what we're gonna do. I've got the eight pound test here. Let me grab this 15 pound braid, spool some of this off, just a little bit. Let's see, probably about that much. So I got something to work with. I'm gonna take the end of the braid, the end of the mono, I'm gonna get them side by side right there. 
Let me get a little bit of line. Now those lines are side by side, just like that. I'm gonna make a loop, okay? Just like that. And I'm gonna put both ends of the line through that loop three times, that's it. And then I'm gonna pull them down tight, just like that. I'm gonna have to pull each one of these a little bit because I can see a, a little piece of uh, slack in there. There it went. So, there. Now, those two lines are knotted together, just like that. Pretty simple stuff. I'm gonna take my scissors again, and I am gonna trim those tag ends off. I'm gonna leave just a little, a little whisker, a little whisker, a tag end like that. Those lines are connected together. If you're fighting a fish big enough to get to that knot, you've got something huge on. You've got too big a fish for your tackle, but uh, for all purposes, you know, practical purposes, those lines are joined. It's a fairly strong knot. You are ready to spool on the rest of your line. You're ready to spool on your braid. I'm gonna go ahead and attach that spool of braid to the line winder and I'll be right back and we will fill that reel up. Okay, there we go. I've got the big spool of line on the wine, uh, a line, <laughs> can't even talk right now, Tim. I've got the big spool of braid on the line winder. I've got it attached to the reel. I've actually started to reel it a little bit. You can see some of that braid starting to go on there. Now, all we need to do, I think I've got the tension adjusted, right? This is gonna spin around so as not to twist the line. And there we go, buddy. We are going for it. We are spooling away. Now, as I said, this could be your dad or your mom, your brother or your fishing buddy holding that line with a pencil through the middle. But to, since I'm by myself, this line winder makes it really convenient. So as I spool this on, let me tell you a little bit about braid, not just for Timmy, but for everybody else out there. I am using braided line now exclusively on my spinning gear. It casts further, okay, that's one advantage. It lasts longer, that's two advantages. It has very little stretch, it's very fine in diameter, which means you can use really strong line and still get a good amount of line on your reel. It resists twisting really well. The only downside to it is, is it does make for some epic tangles at times, but what you can do when you do get a tangle, just cut the line out because it's really easy to, do, to tie a double uni knot in braid, tie that double uni, trim off the tag ends and go on with your day, no problem. It's plenty strong. It won't give you any issues down the road. So I'm getting close to being full, okay? One thing you don't wanna do with a spinning reel is overfill it. You can get in trouble with that. But I, let me see if you can see this. There's a flat part of the spool right there I don't know if you can see that. And then there's kind of the angled part. You wanna take the line up near the edge of that flat part, okay? If the reel's too empty, it's gonna cut down on your casting distance. But if the reel's too full, the, the line's gonna to wanna to jump off there all the time, which is a total pain in the neck. So I'll put a little bit more on there. And you can see how well that line winder works. I mean, that's pretty flawless, pretty simple operation for a guy that doesn't have anybody to help him. Let's see. And I'm really close to where I want to be. I'm gonna give it a few more, a few more turns there. And I think I'm gonna be there. Yeah, I'm there. So what do I do next? Well, at this point I can I can connect it to my rod, or since I don't have my rod with me right now, I'm gonna end up putting this on one of my four-piece spinning rods. I'm just gonna go ahead, click. I snapped the line off. Now, let me take this spinning reel off here, and I wanna show you something, Tim. Most guys out there know this, and you might know this too, but let me show you. Most spinning reels have, that there on the table, most spinning reels have a line holder on the spool. Let me turn this around where you can see it. See that little, that little black triangle there? That's a little piece of plastic, and you can, you know, use, usually it takes both hands, but you can work that line into there. Oops, I almost had it. Everything's harder on camera. Okay, there we go. Nope, I almost had it. So you can work that line underneath there. 
and uh, that will hold your line just like just like that this is like the hardest part of the whole the whole operation <laughs> anyhow there we have it the line is attached to that little line holder i'm ready to put this on a rod um, when you do that make sure you put it back underneath the bale thread it through your rod put on your snap swivel whatever you're going to use attach a lure you can attach a little bit of leader material whatever your preference is but you are ready to fish that braid is going to last for a long time it's very strong it's very limp you're going to be able to cast long distances and uh, hopefully tim you're going to be yelling fish on remember to back that drag off though we tightened it down pretty tight when we spooled the line on so you're going to always want to check your drag before you start fishing i've gone on and on forever i'm out of here for now i'm kel kellogg you have a great day out there in youtube land tim i want to see a picture of a fish and uh, remember guys if you're looking for gear fish hunt shoot .com. that's where you'll find my four-piece spinning rods and more i'm out of here i'm gonna go shovel snow <laughs>